Hello and welcome again everyone to the C-Max Silent Theater. Now this is the home of Cisco Live's Innovation Showcase. So now Innovation Showcases, now they are the latest innovations from Cisco providing the context and the inspiration that IT professionals today need to create the world of tomorrow. Now today we'll be looking at the subject of transformation through innovation. And to tell us about it, please give a warm welcome to Sumit Arora. Hello everyone, good afternoon, and a special welcome to the service provider community at Cisco Live. I am uh, Sumit Arora, I lead the network systems business at Cisco for service provider, also known as the SP routing business. And uh, today we're gonna to talk about innovation and partnership in the SP community to deliver solutions to SP's biggest challenges. So let me talk a little bit about what we see worldwide as far as the SP challenges are concerned. Now, clearly, across the world, we see a challenge of scale or the opportunity of scale. And what I mean by that is major explosion in bandwidth consumption, major explosion in connectivity with the large number of devices coming online, and a major explosion in the number of and type of applications that are using the network that drive new requirements. So clearly, a big explosion in scale overall. Now, apart from scale, the other thing that is important to us as SP is that our uh, infrastructure needs to be secure, right? Uh, the, it, it is mission critical infrastructure and it needs to be really uh, unbreakable. So that's a big one. The third big challenge is the need to retain customers even though we have, um, we have a lot of competition from alternate providers, the need for SPs to have that identity with customers and maintain loyalty. So if you look at the scale problem, the secure infrastructure problem, and you look at the need to retain customers, there is an, another aspect to it, which is that the revenue profile for SPs is flat. So what could be a better innovation opportunity than a perfect storm where you need to scale, you need to have secure infrastructure, you need to deliver to new types of applications, retain customers, and yet, maintain it, do it in a profile that is flat as far as revenue is concerned. So let's talk a little bit about Cisco's innovation strategy to help solve these challenges. I'll just fix this. All right, so uh, our innovation strategy is focused on solving the SP's challenges. We are here as problem solvers, clearly, and this strategy is focused on a few pillars. Automation, simplification, programmability, and virtualization. When you need to scale something, it needs to be simplified. It needs to be simpler building blocks. That's how you scale something efficiently. So simplification is a big theme. Virtualization is a big theme because virtualization enables flexibility and cost reduction. Automation clearly for efficient operations and for speed. And lastly, but not least, programmability so that the network can adapt to changing requirements. It's not just important to focus on what we innovate. It's also important to focus on how we innovate. And Cisco's strategy is to drive an engagement model where we are agile, iterative, we're sitting hand in hand with SP, our customers to solve the problems, and where our engineering and innovation machine is connected to the SP's operation so that the time to value for innovation can be reduced. So this is a big pillar for our strategy. So I'm going to double click uh, further on the innovation uh, approach. Now what we have done is we have taken the problems of SP to heart, right? and every bit of innovation uh, energy is focused on creating value for the SP. So 
what we've done is we've looked at every category of spend, whether it is facilities, whether it is power, whether it is network infrastructure, or it is the cost of operating the infrastructure, and we have aligned the innovation engine to deliver value on these aspects. But, it's not just about those. The entire value creation for SP through our innovation, we have put that into four journeys. So think of us as walking hand in hand with the entire SP community on these journeys. Let me talk about these journeys. Mass scale networking. This is about delivering capital efficient scaled infrastructure. And we'll talk a lot about that today. Second pillar is automation, which is about delivering operating expense reduction. As you may know, most SPs spend four to five X on OPEX as compared to CAPEX. But it is not just about OPEX reduction, it is also about speed and flexibility. So automation is a big one for that. Between mass scale networking and automation, it's about delivering cost savings to SPs at a high level. However, there is one thing that differentiates Cisco in terms of a 360 partnership, which is we're not just about helping SPs save money. We, we definitely, that is important as we discussed. It is also about helping SPs make more money, generate new revenue. And that's where we leverage Cisco's entire portfolio of cloud managed connectivity, Wi-Fi, about collaboration, about IoT slash Jasper, about infinite video platform and video services. And we partner with SPs so that we can deliver, SPs can deliver business to consumer and business to business services and generate new revenue. So that is a big part of the journey that we have defined here together. Today, I am going to focus on innovation in mass scale networking and automation. So let's dive deeper into mass scale networking. We discussed, we talked about the need for scaled infrastructure and the costs and the need to keep capital efficiency and operational efficiency. Now Cisco began its journey with networking and we haven't forgotten our roots. So a lot of the focus of innovation is still on the building blocks, the ASICs, the hardware, the software, the network operating system such as the iOS or iOS XR. But we have added a focus on autonomous networks on top of that so that we can deliver more automated outcomes. And we have taken to heart the concept of open innovation, which essentially means the ability to coexist innovation from Cisco, from our customers, from our partners, all of these can come together on an open platform and work with each other to create new value. So this open innovation concept is a big one for us. So let's keep going deeper here. Let's talk a little bit about investments in mass scale networking. Let me give you an example because we will cover this uh, with a use case later as well. Recently, about two or three years ago, uh, in India, the country rank for mobile broadband data consumption in the world was 150th, just about two years ago. And then uh, we've partnered with one of the digital services provider there to build a massive uh, network and bring hundreds of millions of people and devices onto the network. The rank of the country changed from 150th in the world to number one in the world in mobile broadband data consumption. But more importantly, a lot of underserved, unconnected people, the farmers, the students got access to information that they never had before. This is an equalizing force. So when we look at mass scale networking, we have a bigger meaning to it. And by the way, that was just one country example. This is true worldwide, this is happening worldwide. So how is this powered? How is this mass scale networking powered uh, where we can deliver it in a cost, uh, in a capital efficient fashion? It's powered through investment in silicon. 
Cisco is betting heavily on both merchant silicon as well as Cisco silicon, so you will see a lot of innovation. It's through investment in systems where we can build very small systems that can hang outdoors to very, very large, the largest routing systems in the world that power the internet core today. It's through investment in operating system because that's how the system comes to life. And it's not just about delivering routers and switches, it's about delivering the entire network. And that's what we do with the operating system. And then it's about embedding the ASICs and the operating system with enough APIs and telemetry and visibility so that you can deliver analytics-powered infrastructure, and we'll talk about that shortly. And lastly, but not least, it's about delivering architectures. Because we're not just building devices, we're building networks, we're building services on top of networks. So architectures such as the 5G architecture, or remote file disaggregation, or cloud scale architectures, these are important. And a lot of our innovation is in this space. So I'll keep double clicking because this is an innovation talk and it's important to share with you where we are. I think one thing to remember is silicon diversity and silicon choice. This allows our customers to get the best price performance, the best power consumption that is possible in the world today. So Cisco offers silicon diversity and choice of silicon. So that's a big one. Second is fundamental innovation in power in optics, in chassis. Why? Because we want to be able to deliver more and more bandwidth in a smaller and a more efficient way. Good for the planet, good for all of us, good for the bottom line. So that's a key one. And over the last 20 years, in collaboration with you, we have, uh, we have had the pleasure of delivering many systems like GSR, CRS, I'm sure some of you have fond memories of those, uh, the ASR 9000 the NCS family, and we'll continue to do that. But it's not just the routing world. One of the areas where we have innovated and are innovating actively is data center interconnect. As the cloud scale data centers come online in large numbers, the need to connect them efficiently is a big problem. And we were the first to deliver one terabit uh, per second per rack unit in terms of optical DCI in a small form factor product. Uh, we're, we're humbled by the fact that three out of the top five cloud providers extensively use this product. And we were the first to offer 250 gig, gig wavelengths uh, uh, in a pluggable uh, form factor, which was, which was quite, quite a challenge, but quite an exciting innovation to deliver. Now, 30% of our R&D spend is actually, uh, within the SP routing space, is in optical systems. And no wonder there are more than 2,000 customers that have chosen Cisco products, uh, more than 35,000 uh, ports at 100 gig and 200 gig, and about 50,000 rodents. So we are very excited about the routing and optical transport space together uh, in terms of systems innovation. So we talked about silicon, the silicon diversity. We talked about uh, uh, systems. Let's talk a little bit about the network OS because this is what brings that system to life. This is the software that runs the network. I'm going to talk about iOS XR. Uh, yes, of course, you get carrier grade, feature rich OS. You can pretty much connect any network to any network. That's important. SPs have, you know, to connect with each other. They have to connect legacy systems. It's important. But on top of that, what we are adding is simplification. How can we make it simpler? We're adding APIs and telemetries so that you get massive visibility from the network, unprecedented visibility from the network, and APIs so that you can program and control the network. And we are com combining that with business model as well as technology model flexibility so that you can consume only what you need and you don't have to uh, you know, consume the whole thing. So that's, that's important. And that's good for the devices, right? The routers, the switches, and the optical transport devices. But the key one here is, as I always say, it's about building the network. It's about the service on the network. And it's about operating that network. So a lot of the focus in our network OS innovation is on reference architectures. Architectures for peering, architectures for the core of the network, architecture for 5G, architecture for mobile. And so a lot of the innovation is on architectures here. 
And then the other big innovation in the network OS is around enabling automation. It's around enabling SPs to transform their operations. And lastly, but most importantly, a lot of the, our focus is on changing our software development pipeline in a way that we can deliver high quality and high velocity on the network OS. So that's where we are focused on as far as network OS innovation is concerned. Just a quick double click. Some of the best open config model support in the industry is available on iOS XR. It's uh, the ability to support the OS on x86, on Cisco Silicon, on Merchant Silicon, and in, our future, and in future on many other options uh, through OS delayering and APIs, right? We're focused on simplifying the OS with modularity and thin, thin, thin versions so that you can consume the right quantity at the right place. The one OS innovation that we are really proud of is segment routing. It's a, it's a complete technology innovation across networking. And I'll talk a little more about this, but this is a big one. This is a big one. So a lot of focus on this capability. And last but not least, over the years, Operating systems became bigger, so we have focused on, as I said, on thinning down, but also focused a lot on performance and security. So what you can expect in terms of secure infrastructure is an OS and a an hardware and a system that is difficult to break into. It's unbreakable, that's our goal. So secure infrastructure is a big deal, and Cisco is rapidly innovating in this space. So stay tuned for more, uh, more information as, as, as we go forward. All right, so we talked about silicon, we talked about systems, we talked about the OS that runs across the network. Let's talk about the network itself. One of the big innovations that you would have heard about at Cisco Live is segment routing. Segment routing is the ability of the application to choose the best path in the network based on their need. So the big thing here is that segment routing ties the SP's network to the applications that are using the network. And I apologize for the headphone coming out. All right. All right, so why segment routing? We see a lot of traction with segment routing te uh, technology across our customer base. We have some named references, such as Vodafone Germany and Bell Canada. Why, why segment routing? We believe that this relevance between application and network can help SPs drive differentiated services and make new revenue. Now this is, this is exciting, but a lot of the folks are using segment routing to drive simplification because the state in the network goes down, so that's a big driver. People are using segment routing for scale, especially in traffic engineering. Traffic engineering for masses. That's what segment routing enables. Traffic engineering has been a difficult problem in our space, and SPs uh, have, have implemented it in small numbers. But if well implemented, if, if traffic engineering can be implemented at scale, it allows applications to get what they want through the network across end to end. So that's a big one. So traffic engineering, engineering at scale. Resiliency, so all the features that you get with traffic engineering, like resiliency, 50 millisecond failovers, and so on, you get that. Optimization, right? Because if you are able to traffic engineer the network with segment routing, you are able to use the network more efficiently. So it's it's a savings. And innovation. As I said, you know, we can put the money in 5G, we can put the money in infrastructure, but we need to also generate more revenue out of it. And the relevance of application to network infrastructure through segment routing enables an SP to offer uh, differentiated revenue services. For example, you could offer uh, a service, uh, a low latency service, or a high resiliency service, or a service with uh, lots, of, lots of bandwidth, uh, or service with uh, disjoint paths. All these can be value-added services that generate new revenue. Earlier, they were not poss possible because of uh, you know, scale issues and complexity issues. Segment routing enables a solution to those problems. So we are very excited about this, really, really enthusiastic, and it's a big area of investment for us. Uh, clearly, again, 
simplifies the stack. The next wave of innovation is with what is called SRV6, so IPv6 segment routing, which by the way, takes the innovation to another level. Uh, so it's not just about traffic engineering or simplification, it's also about network programming, which means the ability to express in the packet what you want to do with the packet, not just the packet, uh, where the packet needs to go. So a big area of innovation for us is segment routing v6. We are very excited, our customers are very excited. So I would uh, encourage you to uh, you know, stay tuned for, for this one. And then on top of segment routing, we are investing in a unified control plane with Ethernet VPN so that all those services that you offer can be offered in a simplified, unified fashion. So this is an area that is clearly very exciting for us. So just to, just to recap, we talked about silicon, we talked about systems, we talked about network OS, and then we talked about segment routing as a building block in terms of uh, network architectures. So let's go, uh, let's keep going, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the network operation itself. Now, one of the, one of the areas that I mentioned uh, is uh, the, the addition of API and telemetry to the network OS. Why did we do that? Uh, clearly, the goal is to help SPs attack that OPEX part of the problem. OPEX is four to five times CAPEX, right? So, uh, what we want to enable is uh, essentially autonomous networking, where the network is able to operate itself. And the way we are doing this is uh, through leveraging massive visibility from the network. Now, think of self-driving cars, right? Uh, it has a bunch of cameras, it has a dedicated uh, CPU, and it's always watching, right? It's, it's watching much more than what the typical human attention span is. That's why the future of self-driving cars is bright because we believe that, you know, compared to a human who's looking at emails or maybe text while driving, which, is, which we should not do, uh, you know, that dedicated mechanism would be much, much more accurate and much better, right? So same thing with networks. When we were operating the network with SNMP and CLI, it gave us limited visibility. We, had, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't get enough from the network to be able to operate it. But as soon as we enable telemetry, it's, it's thousands, thousand X. It's, it's orders of magnitude more visibility from the network. And then we put these usable APIs through model, you know, models, data models like open config models or native models. What happens is suddenly you allow for a closed loop to happen. So you allow the infrastructure to report a lot of data through telemetry. You allow big data software to do analytics on top of it and to detect patterns, patterns such as, hey, this is how my network is actually being used. This time of the day, this day of the month, this month of the year, this is where congestion happens. This is what happens when a problem is about to occur in the network. So all that information is coming out from the network devices as telemetry. And what we are doing is, we're adding analytics software on top, outside the box, at the network, to kind of process all this and give these as insights. And with these insights, one can now write applications or use cases based on the real applications that are using the network to drive the network behavior differently. If an application expects latency of Y, but the network is delivering X, and now you know that because you are getting the telemetry, you can actually reroute the, uh, the traffic through another path. So this is an, uh, this is an exciting area for us. Uh, the possibilities are limitless. You can do a lot, right? I just gave you one or two use cases, but the use cases are, they are, they are limitless. And every one of us will innovate in this space. Uh, it's, so it's an exciting one. Now, what we will see happen here is Cisco is going to focus the innovation and automation on two broad areas, right? First is we are going to focus on an end-to-end, -end, uh, 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 a cross-functional uh, uh, implementation, which means you can plan, you can design, you can implement, you can operate, and you can optimize the network um, uh, using our automation software and our automation innovation. Now, uh, one, one aspect that I will, I will share with you is 
that there is a decommission piece as well, right? So it's, it's not just plan, design, implement, operate, optimize. We're also going to look at decommission piece. So that's an important one. Uh, I think our focus is going to be on network operations. So it's going to be focused on the mass scale infrastructure and it's going to be focused on services and topology and inventory around that infrastructure. So we're not going to focus immediately on uh, you know, an application, a gaming application that's using the network, but we are going to focus on the network and its operation. So clearly uh, a big one, big area of innovation for Cisco, very exciting. And I think I mentioned open innovation. So the way we are going to do this is, we are all going to do this together. So those APIs, the telemetry, and all those schemas, they are open. So any one of us can write these outcomes and these applications to deliver, uh, deliver automation outcomes, right? So again, automation is a big area for us and uh, really excited about sharing this uh, space with you. Uh, just to give you an example, I think I mentioned the big uh, network we built in India together with the, with the Reliance Geo, right? It has more than 150,000 uh, network devices in the network, actually way more than that. And here is an example of automating. I mean, even if you put tens of thousands of people, you cannot operate such a network. It's difficult to operate it. So uh, we, we have built uh, uh, what is called the Evolved Programmable Network Manager, uh, a, a tool uh, or, a, or a platform for automation that enables you to detect, correlate, isolate. So entire fault management uh, is done using this platform for such a wide, such a massive, massive network. And this is again built on top of visibility, uh, topology information, uh, device information, network information, the ability to correlate faults so that you can remove unnecessary ones and focus on the right ones, and then being able to uh, you know, drive troubleshooting of those. So very, uh, really excited about where the automation space is coming uh, and uh, you know, coming together here. Now, I'll keep uh, summarizing in the middle. So we talked about the journeys, so we talked about mass scale networking, which is enabled by efficient uh, capital, uh, you know, which enables efficient capital spending, which is enabled by silicon systems, network OS, and the, the uh, enablement of automation. We talked about automation journey, which enables OPEX efficiency, speed, flexibility, right? Which is enabled by that automation platform that is cross-functional. Let's talk about the network architectures. Now I mentioned that a lot of the innovation in network architectures is around cloud scale, is around access, especially disaggregation in access, and uh, it's around 5G. 5G is a big one, so let me, uh, let me talk a little bit about 5G today. Um, if you look at 5G, there is going to be innovation, of course, in radio and the RAN. There's going to be innovation in Evolve Packet Core. Uh, innovation in IP transport, innovation in automation, and innovation in edge services or edge compute as, as everyone talks about. Uh, Cisco obviously is focused on all these five pillars and a lot of our focus is on creating value for the SP. So what do I mean by that? 5G is going to mean a lot of investment for SP. We are going to put a lot of money into building that infrastructure and it has to pay back not just as a connectivity service, not just as a bandwidth service, but more than that. So if you take that segment routing piece that we talked about earlier, and we take uh, a, a next generation IP transport architecture for 5G, one of the things we are really excited about is network slicing. And the ability for an SP to come and offer a 5G network slice to an enterprise and say, hey, this is an encrypted 5G network slice. To another one, for critical IoT, this is a highly reliable uh, network slice. You can do your remote surgery on it. By the way, this one is a highly uh, high bandwidth network slice at between these hours and you can do your data backup through it. So the idea is to focus on uh, uh, the uh, innovation that enables SPs to deliver new revenue generating services. And, um, and uh, the other big, big piece in this whole equation is security. I think I briefly mentioned that secure infrastructure is a big priority for Cisco. But one of the other pieces is the tie-in to the broader security uh, 
proposition that Cisco offers. As you would have seen at Cisco Live, uh, security uh, is a big uh, focus area for us and uh, Cisco is a big, uh, big player in security. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to tie uh, the device security, the infrastructure security through protocols and technologies to the security of the users and the applications that are using the network. So that will all be coming through to, uh, through the uh, 5G architecture. I definitely invite our SP customers to co-innovate and co-develop with us in this exciting area. I want to also uh, highlight uh, some of the demos uh, that are here in the world of solutions. I think it's in the orange section right there. Uh, that's the SP uh, demo area. And uh, today you can, uh, you, know, you can see network OS innovation, which is the iOS XR innovation. I spoke about that. You can see uh, demos on um, multi-layer and multi-vendor uh, networking. Uh, the example I gave with Geo the Evolve uh, Programmable Network Manager and other, uh, uh, other uh, uh, tools such as, uh, other platforms such as NSO that enable multi-vendor, so we are very excited about that. I invite you to uh, look at uh, optical technologies through the flexible Rodem, uh, multi-domain orchestration, as I said, it's not just multi-function automation, but multi-domain, which is a critical one across cable, across optical, across routing. And I invite you to also learn more about segment routing because that is, uh, that is fundamentally different. And that is one thing that will really, you know, together as we work on it and as we implement it, we can drive greater relevance for networking to applications, which is, 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 a, is a valuable business proposition. I also want to encourage you and invite you to learn and train and certify with us. Uh, the Cisco training for service providers, the Cisco certifications, we have a lot to offer. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we're very, very proud of our community. We are one, one community here and, uh, uh, you know, excited to share all this uh, technology in detail with you all. Now, let me recap, uh, recap what we went through today. Uh, we went through innovation journeys that support the solution uh, to the biggest problems that SPs fail, uh, face today around uh, scale, around customer retention, around new applications, the need for new revenue uh, in, a, in an environment of flat revenue. So we talked about innovation that drives that. We talked about the 360 of innovation across the ability to deliver new services, make new money as well as save money. We double clicked on innovation in mass scale networking and automation. Mass scale networking itself is driven by innovation in silicon, in the basic building blocks, in physics, in, in some of the most challenging areas, and we are very actively uh, driving those. So clearly, you know, the silicon innovation. Innovation in network operating system, where we are driving more modularity, more Linuxization, more server-style operations, and, uh, you know, of course, keeping the, the feature-rich OS and the ability to build networks intact. Uh, we talked about IP transport for 5G and how the evolution of network slicing and an all IP RAN and those aspects, we can work together to make 5G make money, more money for the SPs than just another transition into higher bandwidth. And we talked about the exciting area of analytics driven automation which is powered by visibility and telemetry from the network. And lastly, we talked about the building block of segment routing and EVP and that simplifies the network allows for more innovation and resiliency. Now, I, I am absolutely proud of this community and the innovators inside Cisco as we deliver innovation across this spectrum. I want to say this again, that Cisco is a, is a great partner for SPs for many reasons, and I'll say that. Of course, our global reach uh, is a big advantage. Uh, our innovation velocity and our innovation spectrum is a big advantage. But the most important thing is we never let, let our customers down. And the way we are uh, doing all this innovation, it's not just about what, and it's not just about uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the how, it's about, uh, it's, it's about the engagement model and the partnership. And what I want to assure and uh, you know, again invite you all is that we are committed to working together with you hand in hand 
in, and the focus is on your solve, uh, problems because they are the source of innovation. And uh, together in this uh, co-innovation fashion, we look to uh, be your best partners in, 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 in solving all those problems we talked about. But uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, listening to me today and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, you having a great Cisco life. Thank you.